How's it going guys? Hope you're cool. It's been a minute. We're back officially. First of all, happy birthday to me. I know that it's kind of past, but hey, it still counts. Thank you guys for, you know, uh, sending me all the love. I appreciate that. You know, it's always gratitude to see a new year. I'm learning that the simple things are important. So in a good place. Anyway, straight to business, as the thumbnail said, it's not a clickbait. How not to fail as a YouTuber. To best explain it, I'm gonna use my own perspective and my own experience of my journey since I started YouTube and the hiatus and to now. Okay, so I always wanted to share and be creative in terms of you know, vlogging and filming. It's just that, you know, as you grow up, sometimes you don't really know how to harness it yet. It's like the raw materials were there. I remember one time in the UK back in 2006, I think, uh, I did a little a day in my life kind of thing where I remember I was going to the studio. I was in Croydon at that time. And uh, I took my Nokia N73. It must have been that. I kind of did a vlog trip from home, you know, jumping on the tram and then going into the studio. Again, I didn't really understand or fathom the concept of a vlog as much, but I just knew that it was like this desire for me to share stuff. Fast forward down to 2018, I officially launched my vlog and uh, things really went well when it started. You know, I was all geared up, kind of had my stop starts, but I was doing really well. I remember I had some really cool episodes. Again, I was learning as I was going. There was a lot of faith applied because I didn't really always know what I was doing half the time. To take it up a notch, I even tried to like set up a mini studio in one of the sets, kind of had like this sanctuary, which kind of was the dream to have my own YouTube studio so that at least I can have a, a place where I can go and just be focused. And I started to shoot a few things there as well. And then the cove happened. China has identified the cause of the mysterious new virus. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. A rapidly spreading virus. The first US case has been detected. Well, the whole war was in shits, you know. That obviously threw me off as well. As you know, I remember going to, to, to the grocery store and everybody like in Nigeria, especially, there was this real panic and uh, it, it was just crazy. And so I had to take my stuff kind of that I had set up, my light stands, and you know, my equipment, my little rig, I had to dismantle it to come back home, which wasn't necessarily conducive because of the noise, the environment, and too much distraction. I still had some client projects to do. It was hectic because we had to create this uh, a cross between a remote show and a live show. And we had to make sure that we still pull a show because resources had been given while also trying to manage the crowd. So while all that was happening, I couldn't do my vlog. I couldn't really set up shop as I envisioned it. I had a sense that I had to do it in that perfect space with the perfect lighting, you know, and you know, with the props and everything. But life happened and I couldn't. So I think this brings me to my first point. You have to think out of the box and you have to be adaptive. In retrospect, that was probably one of the most engaging times in my life. There were golden moments where in that stress, in that everybody wearing masks, in those darkish spaces and in all that stress, all I probably had to do was just grab my phone and get like a, you know, like a BTS kind of thing and turn the phone back to me and just talk about life as a YouTuber on the go during COVID or something. It would have still been authentic, but I was stocking my mind of just making it perfect. And again, with the pressures of how YouTubers were and the Peter McKinnons and, and all these guys doing it perfectly, I thought that, yeah, it's not good enough. Also, imposter syndrome is a big thing. And that brings me to my second point. You have to embrace your unique circumstance. Embrace your uniqueness. Even if it's not fancy, it is in that grit. It is in that ugly that you would find yourself. And that's something 
I keep reminding myself, especially now that I'm back in YouTube, I'm trying to just learn to embrace what I have. Like now I'm in my little basement flat. It's not fancy, you know? I have the quirks, I have the challenges, but I realize that it is okay. I'm sitting on my little sofa bed and I deliberately sit at the edge so that I can have some depth in the shot. And you know, you can see my little lamp there, just little things that you do to make things conducive. And that's something I've been teaching myself recently to not allow my limitations or the things I wish were different to limit me from being creative because you actually have everything you need sometimes. You know, look at what you have in your hand and just create. My coffee is cold. Let me heat it up. Yeah, better. Mm, almost too hot now, but you can see the steam. Yeah. Cool. Now, my final point, I know this one is a bit controversial, but hear me out. Try not to be a YouTuber. I know, let me explain. It is a known fact that YouTube can get a bit heavy, especially if you think of it in a conventional mindset. I have been privileged to see some of the greatest YouTubers that inspired me go through this season where they burn out. They don't wanna do anything. Even in my own short YouTube career as you know that I started, I felt that. You see somebody like a Caleb Pike, who is such an inspiring guy, is so creative and inventive, had to come on YouTube and say, you know what, guys, I'm gonna change this thing. I've been doing this thing for like 14 years and I need a break. Not because I don't enjoy doing videos, because I realize that I'm in this rat race where I'm trying to do videos that are conventional because we're looking at algorithms and all the things. Matty Hapoja has also had a hiatus. And of course, everybody's life is different and everybody's gonna feel the pinch based on their responsibilities outside the YouTube world differently. You're one human being and you need time to manage family or life or even work. You have to find balance. And while sometimes, you know, we just see the finished product after the edits and, you know, all the fancy text and stuff, the truth is it's a lot. You know, just recording this video, you're gonna do a couple of takes, you're gonna you know, wait because your neighbor is going into their flat, you know, you're gonna hear your landlady or her sons jump and say something, a car, a loud car is gonna pass. You're dealing with all these things. These are just the minor stuff. But then you, you deal with maybe sponsors when you get to that stage and your numbers are growing and then uh, the algorithm that you need to serve, making sure that you're getting the likes, the subscribers, you're looking at new stuff, new equipment is coming out. You're thinking, oh, I need to review the next new equipment. You're thinking of embargoes. It could be a lot. I like what Tom Buck, you know, this great YouTube I follow that is very niche and podcasty with his great colors. Tom has this mission statement, kind of like his guideline on his website. And basically he doesn't even do the whole embargo thing, except in unique situations when he's done some stuff with Rode, I think, and you know, they were doing like the podcaster and stuff. But of course he's not going to, if he had it, drop it before the embargo. But the whole, you have to release the video on this day with everybody else, he doesn't even do that. I could be wrong, I'll check. But the point I'm trying to make is he's carved a niche for himself and understood that there's certain things he cannot do because he has to balance his life. And I think I'll take a page from that book. You know, while I know that I have to be full time with YouTube in order to gain the traction and be, you know, do the quality stuff and be consistent, there has to be a balance because there's no point breaking and being depressed because you're doing YouTube. So for me, even in coming back and trying to do YouTube, I'm not thinking like a YouTuber, you know? I am creative, so I'm gonna go the extra mile to do certain things, but I realize that even with my own being and how I am as a person, I'll burn out if I try to do that whole rat race every week, trying to drop four videos and trying to be on every new equipment that comes out, you know? And that's for me. It might be different for somebody else, but that's for my authentic self. And ultimately, I think, this is a long game. I wanna see YouTube as a partnership into my life as Anis Holloway because I have different facets. I'm, I'm not a one trick pony. I'm kind of a jack of many trades. So you can do the same too. Be creative, no doubt. Challenge yourself. But don't, don't get too stuck on this whole algorithm thing and trying to 
do apples to apples comparison because your life is always going to be unique to you and you need to manage your time. You're going to go through different troughs, different challenges in your journey and in your timeline. And the issue is if you're looking at somebody else and their life and their fanciness and how they do their stuff and you're trying to literally match yourself to that precisely, you're going to burn out and you're going to break and you're going to miss out. I would know. So I say all this to say, I have traveled from afar through many seas and lands. I have seen, experienced things the words could not command. Through it all, I've come to see that I am best as me. So why try to be someone else when I could just be me? After all, there's enough what's up in the world. There's enough what's up in the world. There's enough what's up in the world. So I just want to be the other guy. That says hi. Maybe I am more like Jesse Driftwood or even Caleb Pike. Cool and calm like Nigel Paris or Tepo Hapoja. But ultimately, I am who I am. Cause there's an app, what's up in the world? There's an app, what's up in the world? So I just want to be the other guy That says 